This curve shows relationship between partial pressure of oxygen that is in millimeter of mercury placed on the x-axis and percentage saturation of hemoglobin it is placed on the y-axis. Here let us discuss how to draw the curve. You can see here at PO2 20 mmHg positive saturation is 35%. At 40 mmHg PO2 positive saturation is 75%. At 60 mmHg PO2 positive saturation is 89 or 90%. At 80 mmHg PO2 the positive saturation becomes 95% and at 100 mm of mercury partial pressure of oxygen the positive saturation is 97.5% Positive saturation becomes 100% when partial pressure of oxygen is 120 mm of mercury. This is oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. As we have discussed, it shows the relationship between partial pressure of oxygen and percentage saturation of hemoglobin. The relationship is not linear. It is sigmoid shaped or S shaped. Now, this curve has two zones one that is loading zone it is also known as plateau or flat part this one and second that is unloading zone which is also known as steep part loading zone or plateau or association zone that is related to oxygen uptake in the lungs when partial pressure of oxygen is 100 millimeter of mercury or above hemoglobin is about 100 percent saturated when PO2 falls to 60 mm of mercury, you can see here, hemoglobin saturation falls to 90%. And therefore, loading zone or flat part gives margin of safety because oxygen uptake by the pulmonary blood is not affected. In spite of change in PO2, PO2 falls from 100 mm of mercury to 60 millimeter of mercury but percentage saturation falls only 10 percent and this is important for mountain climbing to moderate altitude as well as in pulmonary diseases here person can tolerate changes in the atmospheric pressure without compromising the oxygen carrying capacity of hemoglobin now Second part is steep part you can see below 60 mmHg PO2. When the PO2 falls below 60 mmHg the curve becomes steeper you can see here and it is concerned with oxygen delivery to the tissue. It shows that large amount of oxygen can be delivered to the tissue with minor fall in the oxygen tension. Advantages of sigmoid shape It allows great uptake of oxygen at the lung despite of variation in alveolar air PO2. Another advantage is tissues are supplied with oxygen according to their need and hemoglobin acts as a buffer and it maintains tissue PO2 at 40 mmHg. When tissue PO2 rises above 40 mmHg, oxygen would not be released from hemoglobin. And when tissue PO2 falls below 40 mmHg, oxygen is released from the hemoglobin. Now we discuss about shift of the curve to right and left. Shift of the curve to right means decrease affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. For example, as we have discussed at 20 mmHg PO2, percentage saturation of normal curve is 35%. But here you can see whenever there is shift to right at the same PO2 20 mmHg percentage saturation is less than 35% and that shows release of oxygen from hemoglobin. That means decrease affinity of oxygen. Now factors they cause shift to right. When there is increase in the partial pressure of carbon dioxide there is shift to right. Also decrease pH or increase H plus concentration, increase in the temperature and increase in 2,3-diphosphoglycerate which is the product of glycolysis. This all factors they cause shift of the curve to right side. Now what is Bohr's effect? 
a shift of oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve to right in response to increase in blood carbon dioxide and H plus ions has a significant effect by release of oxygen from the blood in the tissues. This is Bose effect. Now, next is shift to left. It means that at the same PO2, you can see here as we have discussed at 20 mmHg PO2, percentage saturation is more than 35%. That means increased affinity of oxygen for hemoglobin. Following factors they cause shift to left. They are decrease in the PCO2, increase pH or decrease H plus concentration, decrease temperature, fetal hemoglobin because fetal hemoglobin has less affinity for 2,3-diphosphoglycerate because of presence of gamma chains instead of beta chains. Carbon monoxide also shifts the curve to left due to inhibition of 2,3-DPG synthesis. For myoglobin also, the curve is shifted to left. Myoglobin is iron containing pigment which is present in the muscle, mainly muscles of legs and heart. And for myoglobin, the curve is rectangular hyperbola. It is not sigmoid shape like hemoglobin and myoglobin does not show Bohr's effect.